Hello, everyone. What's we're going on? here. It, we, I don't know, you guys, this means nothing to you guys, but it is much earlier in the day than it usually is when we no, do it's this. It's so sunny. And it is, it is a very unique feeling to be doing this. It, right now, it is 2.48 in the afternoon. It's so early. I was here so early. This is like it's s- good. six hours before our typical start we Usually, point. yeah, end up getting around to it far too late to enjoy the night, truly. But we are here, and we we have a very interesting episode. We're going to go... We're, we're doing this one a little bit different. We're going to go kind of just keep it relaxed, you know, have a nice conversation. Keep it casual. Have a conversation amongst friends, but we are also going to discuss and dissect what the hell happened to the lost city of Atlantis. Atlantis. Now... Oh, we are starting a cult, by the way. That's Grand Up Jake. Yes, that's it's that true. It's always someone's first episode. Yeah, that is, that is true. Maybe this is the one that piqued your interest. And if it did, welcome. We love you. There you go. Um, So, let me start by saying this. Atlantis, for those of you that are unaware, is the supposed lost city that the Greek philosopher Plato talked about. Now, why is it important? Well, because supposedly, according to Plato, they were extremely advanced. They had wildlife that nobody else had. They had rare earth elements that were only available on the island of Atlantis. And then one day, they just, they were gone. Gone. Just gone. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, people, everybody has their opinion. You know, everybody has opinions on what they think Atlantis could have been was or maybe never was yeah you know? people think it's myth some people think it's real no one knows where it is so many speculative things going on oh here. yeah so why don't we just jump right in to the greasy details that i mean i'm gonna give him the honorary doctorate uh dr plato i feel like he deserves it <laughs> If anyone deserves an honor, I mean, move over Shaquille O'Neal. Like, this guy deserves it more than you. <laughs> Wait, Shaq is a doctor? Yeah, he's got an honorary doctorate degree. From what? For In what? In basketball? <laughs> I think. In Papa John's merchandising? What is this? I think when they, I don't know this for certain, but I feel like when they give honorary doctorate degrees, they're not degrees at all. It's, it's no, just, it's just... <laughs> a title. And it really that's, means nothing. I, I think so. But I'm oh, going to give fun. it to him. With the power invested in me by Gomex and the We Are Starting a Cult fan base. Plato is just like Shaq. We are officially anointing the first honorary doctorate degree to Plato. So, <laughs> congratulations. The education system that is We Are Starting a Cult. Plato, if you're ethereal energy systems are out there in this universe right now vibrate your energy this way and come receive your honorary degree and if they're not then one of your you know what the great senti- great 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 yeah. grand family members can the sentiments out there mm-hmm. okay so so jake hit me hit me with this hit me with this what are we doing where where does this all begin it starts with fucking uh plato talking oh plato talking about it uh, apparently, thousands of years before he uh, initially spoke on it, that's when uh, Atlantis was was occurring. That's when it was in its heyday. I think it was around 9,000 years before. But he really only mentions it in two of his dialogues, which are named Timaeus and Critias. Critias, maybe. Mm-hmm. Those, are yes. the, those are the two. Yes. Now... So, to put this in times of relative relativity for listeners right now, this would have taken place um, around 13,000 years ago. Yeah. Somewhere in that window, the city of Atlantis. Um, we have Plato discussing this long-lost civilization, and that was about... 2,500 to 3,000 yeah. years ago. He, he said he heard it. For, it was like something passed down in his family, the stories of fucking Atlantis. Mm-hmm. And it, the stories that he had in, for like six generations in his family were stories of something that was already 9,000 years old right? when they were starting to be talked about. So 
now I'm I I'm thinking I was thinking I might bring this up later, but I think this is a perfect time because there's people out there thinking, how exactly does this make sense? Okay, so you got this guy. We're, we're for the sake of round numbers, we're gonna say three thousand years ago. This guy's talking about a civilization that ended nine thousand years before that. Yeah. Okay, so. You might be asking yourself, how does a story like this last for 9,000 years with no written documentation? And the truth of the matter is, if the Atlantis is true, if this is to be taken as fact, they would have existed before recorded history began. We had no actual documentation of anything happening before then. Because there was no written language. Yeah, There was no way to write these things down and save them. So, now I want you to turn your attention back to high school, okay? If you're out of high school, think back. If you're in high school, maybe you're doing it right now, or maybe you're going to do it soon. The Odyssey and the Iliad by Homer, not Simpson. That is a story that had existed for thousands of years before it was ever written down because it was traditionally told I mean, I guess what you'd call a campfire story. It's through word of mouth. Yeah, yeah that's how most traditions were passed down through generations. It's, it's oral tradition. Yeah, oral tradition. So keep that in mind with all of this. If that was, if the timeline is somehow messing you up, just remember there are stories out there that exist today in hard form where you could hold it and read it that were long before the days of recorded history. Yeah, and there is one thing I would like to say right now. Uh, just from that story, the Odyssey and all that, and the city of Troy uh, and all that stuff, uh, the city of Troy was long thought to be a myth and just a, a, a tool in Homer's, you know, fucking uh, story he was telling there. Mm-hmm. And what do you know? They found it. They yeah. found Troy thousands of years later. So, who knows, man? Stories might have some tenability. Exactly. Let's just keep that in mind throughout all of this. And there, there is... There's some weird things. I mean, we'll bring them up later about other possible uh, civilizations that we do know now today existed that at one point in history we didn't know existed. We're just like, what? No. So I think before before we kind of go into this, um, we can we can discuss Plato in a few minutes here. But at least the way it was described, it was... Atlantis was the rival of what was then Athens, okay? And Atlantis was far superior. They, interestingly enough, I did not know this, it was the first described utopian society before that word even had an actual definition and meant anything. Damn, the origin of utopia. Now, in the 1500s is when the term utopian became more mainstream that was when it was written about and discussed and it's in a way people kind of use it uh incorrectly i'd say because the idea of a utopia is a society so perfect that it could not actually exist so like when people say oh this Dang is it. <laughs> they're like this is utopia well utopia by definition is so perfect it's so beyond anything that we have that it's it's just impossible in this world. Do you think the movie Zootopia completely bastardized it with all the what with all the petty crimes that all the animals were committing? Were they really committing crimes? Did you not see that movie? No, I didn't. You didn't see Zootopia? Mm-mm. Oh, I did oh, not. Oh, Grant, you need to. I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I cartoon movies. It's very rare that I see a cartoon film. Now I watch <laughs> cartoons. But usually in in quick bites, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. No, well, one of the main characters, he's just a grifter. Nice. He's a fox. What kind of? An- oh, he's a fox. He's a fox. Eh? Why? He wears a long shirt. I want to know. This is extremely off topic of Atlantis, but the answer is just buried as deep as Atlantis is. Yeah. Okay. Why is it that in mainstream Western media, in any form of cartoon, the fox is always the villain? He's always a bad guy. Because they're sly. They work well in the in the shadows and being quiet while sneaking up on their prey. 
but I, maybe I don't know what foxes are like, but I that's just, what media's telling me they're like. I got two examples. I got Swiper and I got the Zootopia guy. What about the Fantastic Mr. Fox? I didn't see that, but it sounds like he might be doing a heist or something. Is that really about like a fox? I thought it was just like puppets and foxes. It probably is. I don't. <laughs> I have no idea. I want to change. I want to flip the script the same way I felt about the Hollandaise sauce situation. I want to flip the script on the fox, and I want them to be represented as positive and not all these right, bastardized right. monsters that want to steal things from children and grift people that come into zoos. They seem cool. They seem cool to me. They're, they're like they laugh like jackals, but they're just they're just really small dogs. Yeah, they're like dogs. The way I see it is, if a dog mated with a really red cat. That would be the offspring. <laughs> that would be a fox, yes. Because they they have the like the size of an extremely large house cat. Yeah. And this, the, they got whiskers. They got the kind of pointed ears. You know, a nice tail. But Maybe it, that's why they're so looked down upon. Because they're they're like the love child of these two long battling uh, species of animals, cats and dogs. It's it's, it's just the black sheep. No one wants to. No one wants to admit that they're adorable. I think that I think that both dogs and cats have been given a bad rap. Um, <laughs> Each by the other's enthusiast. I'm going to say this. I think I, I'm a do- I'm pro dog. I'm above cats. I like cats. Don't get me wrong. I like them both. If I if I had to pick, if they're like gun to my head, Grant, are you a dog or are you a cat fan? I'm a dog person. I like dogs. They're yeah. They're a little bit more. You can you la- you can laugh at them, you know. You, you have can. fun with them. Yeah, they just they're just having a time. They're they, just trying to get through life, and it's hilarious. Sometimes they do some really stupid things that are just like, <laughs> I can't believe you did that. <laughs> Cats, not so much, because they yeah. do stupid things too, but then they get real self conscious about it, and then yeah. they get angry. <laughs> they just like take it out on you. They do a lot of projecting. Cats. They're like, oh, I can't believe I spilt this milk. Damn it. <laughs> I don't know. There's something. But, Dogs are really quirky. You know? Yeah, they are. But in in like a in like a utopia, a true utopia, fucking Atlantis. I hear there's just elephants wandering around, and also sacred bulls. That was a big thing. Yes, I know that was a thing. So and no cats or dogs in any anything. I like that there because Plato talks about how they have. Uh, I believe the direct quote is exotic wildlife not seen anywhere else. Yeah, just wandering around. And I'm interested in that because when you see, I mean, okay, obviously Plato hadn't seen any any of this because this was all gone at this point in the case it was yeah. real. But I'm just, I'm beyond baffled as to why no one tried to describe what that wildlife was. <laughs> they just kind of they just took it at face value. They're like, "Oh yeah, there's animals that we don't know." Anyway, the only specifics I read were elephants and bulls, and the bulls were just like they were revered until they were sacrificed to Poseidon. So, Ooh. but honestly, elephants and bulls are exotic enough for me. See what I think? If I is- saw just an elephant in the street. Are you shitting me? That'd be insane. I I find that very funny. That's something I want to discuss. Uh. So the Atlanteans supposedly, because yeah, I've heard that too, they supposedly sacrificed bulls for Poseidon to, you know, calm the gods. And the one thing that I tend to not agree with is, why in the hell is Poseidon part of the Atlanteans' belief system? I mean, this is <laughs> this is 10,000 years before ancient Greece. You're right. You're right. <laughs> like, where are they getting these ideas? So... I do... Well, all the gods had their, like, allotted, like, temples that people would sacrifice to him for. And, like, Poseidon, mm. he received his lot from the island Atlantis. He was, like, assigned it. Okay, so that was, like, his... Yeah. That he, was his base. He begat children with mortal women. He settled in parts of the island. And he's like, I'll proceed. I'll proceed to... Gross. To do this. I do think, um... It is... It's funny, because the way it's described by Plato is that these... They're not quite human, but they're also not quite gods. That They're like an Achilles type. Yes, the Atlanteans are described as essentially what we would know today as demigods, where they're gods in human form. Now, 
again, I mean, obviously you have to take this whole thing with a grain of salt because we don't know if this is real or not. So, for the purposes of this episode, from here on out, I'm going to be under the assumption that Atlantis was real. So when I make a reference to something, just remember that, okay? It's all, yeah. I'm doing it in this for the sake of the episode and the sake of the knowledge we have to share. So, Atlantis and the Atlanteans are demigods. Now, maybe, just maybe, that's a way of describing how advanced they are, okay? Maybe. Maybe they're not truly gods. Maybe it's an allegorical way of saying that they are beyond the knowledge of what humans were capable of doing at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Hyperbole. Right. Because, I mean, supposedly, supposedly some of the architecture was batshit crazy as well. Oh, yeah. They said it was, like, the most advanced for the time. It was, like, a beautiful. Um, I'm, I'm not sure why this detail has stuck around for so long, but they really, really, really bring out the fact that they believe Atlantis was built in concentric circles. I don't know yeah, why. Yeah. But that it plays a huge role in not even the the actual destruction, but the potential finding of the area as well. If it's a utopia, I mean like the like circular circular shapes aren't like necessarily natural, so like when it comes to putting a man made shape into nature it's kind of, or it is, I don't know. Round shapes are very biological, so maybe mm. they were trying to like make their man-made things as close to biology and like nature as they could, as opposed to the hard right angles. I like that. That's impressive. I don't know. That's just that's just a thought. It is. Who knows? Now this is this is kind of the the bulk of what we have to discuss today, and that would be. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with Plato, he writes in a very unique way. It was very... He writes fictionalized versions of real people that he interacted with and knew. And he writes real conversations that he overheard and had with them. Yeah. And he uses these to usually paint a picture of something happening in the world. So... The biggest example we have, because it's the one that we're probably most familiar with today, would be, I would say, the Allegory of the Cave. Yeah, Allegory of the Cave and, like, the Symposium. Yeah, those are the big two. So I want to I just enlighten you guys, okay? The Allegory of the Cave, in so many words, it says that there is a civilization of people that live in a dark cave, okay? And they perceive things in this cave such as shadows and movements, and what they perceive in that cave is their life. Now, when they leave the cave, they are blinded by the natural light that is outside of the cave. And once they are pretty much able to come to grips with the reality that they're seeing outside of the cave, they try to go back into the cave and explain to the other people that what they're seeing is all a lie, that it's just perception, that they're mis-seeing mis what's out there. And the people in the cave are like, you're crazy. This is what it really is. Yeah. So it's an allegory of perception. That's like philosophy 101. Like, pe a lot of people know the basic outline of it, and they're like, oh, yeah, I kind of understand it. But then there's so many articles just like, there's no one that truly understands what Plato was trying to do here. It's like, so I think we kind of get it, you know? I, <laughs> yeah. I think we get the gist of it. It's like, that makes me just want to read it again. Is this for book sales? What is it? But now, it, it's important to know that for this instance, we are under the assumption that this is only an allegory. We are not proponents of a cave society. Yeah, I mean, it's in the name, you know? Um, we have never investigated to see if this is real, uh, to see if there's actually people <laughs> I'm not down living on in a spelunking, cave. no. But we we understand that. Now, okay, this is where it gets a little confusing, because knowing the information that comes from that, we have to assume that maybe, just maybe, Atlantis is allegorical. Yeah. Maybe it's an example of the downfall of society and that when corruption and greed run rampant 
everything collapses. We don't know. Yeah. It's said to be like an allegory of hubris in the nations. Yeah. And, you know, the one thing that keeps coming back, and the reason that Atlantis is still so prominent in the minds of explorers and conspiracy theorists alike, is the extreme detail that we got from Plato. This is not your run-of-the-mill allegory. It's in the cave. We'll use that as an example. In the allegory of the cave, we're not getting full layouts of what this cave is, how it operates, who lives there, how long it lived, how long it was there. It is simply just a cave. Yeah, you get all the info you need to push the story's agenda through. Right. Like it's it's just bare bones. This is what you need for me to get what I'm trying to say. Mhm. Now, with Atlantis, not only do we have details of the day-to-day life, the societal impact they had, the way their political, I guess, their political system operated, uh, we have hints at what their wildlife looked like, their ecosystem, some of their materials, and even a generic location, okay? There you go. Now, according to Plato... It is past the Pillars of Hercules, okay? And the Pillars of Hercules are real. It's Heracles. Or Heracles, sorry. Heracles. I spoke much too quickly. No worries, no worries. The Pillars of Heracles. Now, if we were to take this information today with the maps that we have, we could assume that the island of Atlantis lied somewhere in the Strait of Gibraltar. Somewhere in the Mediterranean Sea at the largest scale. Somewhere in there was an island nation that was Atlantis. Okay? Okay. All right. Now, let's get into some of the details about Atlantis. So, it is believed that they were, essentially, they were the pinnacle of existence. They were the United States of America post-World War I. They were... They're what America's always thought we were. Yeah. They they were, like, the top dog. They were the ones that no one was messing with. They knew what was coming. Um, they were never truly worried about being invaded because of their extreme naval fleet. Yeah. And just their general location made it almost impossible for them to be taken advantage of. Yeah, apparently they were surrounded on all sides by very vast and fertile plains, but then all that was surrounded by mountains. Jesus, they've got it all, don't they? It's crazy. They just have it all. So, Atlantis. Believe it or not, they were a society made up of everyday people. Now, in most cases... I want to bring this up now because I don't, I, I don't really want to harp on it because I feel like it makes the story less m- magical. Um, there are claims that I think have have a little bit of validity. Um, in most renditions of what Atlantis is, it is believed that they are some type of European civilization. Obviously, that's yeah. just the way it's depicted. Now, this kind of plays into the Eurocentric mindset of people throughout history and how, you Jesus know... Jesus is white and shit and all that. Right, and how, oh, you know, uh, they, you know the slaves never could have built the pyramids because they just weren't as smart as Europeans. There's no way. Uh, Mayan civilization, there's no way. It just doesn't make sense. They were definitely European, There's right? definitely aliens. Um, Aliens are Europeans. So Eurocentrism plays a role in at least the details of Atlantis that we have today. Because, I mean, the the simple truth of it is that's just that's just when it was. That's just how it came to be. You know. Yeah. I mean, back in the day, they weren't worried about things like that. They were focused on we are we're Europe. We're the man. <laughs> like we this are is them. us. We are, this is like one of the few examples in history that hasn't been like whitewashed in that way. Pretty much, yeah. It was always just like this. And Atlantis, supposedly, for unknown reasons, Atlantis was having some inner turmoil uh, with the society and the politics. So they took this out, and they were hoping to attack and take over some more land. 
They were getting land hungry. They were getting greedy. Now, this is where the fall of Atlantis comes in. Because of their greed, because of their just overall shitty behavior. I mean, just let's face it. Yeah. The gods smited them and took them away immediately. Like, this was not gradual. This Over was... one day and one night, it said, yeah. Yeah. It was completely consumed by the ocean. And as a big fuck you to all the people that died there, supposedly the gods covered it, all the burials, all the waste, everything that was sucked up by the water. With the dirtiest thing in the world. Yeah, it was just covered by mud and slime mud, yeah, and goop. Just dirtiness Just overall grossness. Now, this, the reason I bring this up is because in the writings of Plato... They are compared to the Athenians, okay? And now, obviously, there might be a little bit of bias in there with these writings of Plato. Yeah. But in this scenario, the Athenians are the noble society, the people that are living correctly and living under the rule of the gods, and they are spared, and the Atlanteans were not spared. Not at all. Similar to... Well, if you know anything about the Greek gods... You know that their wrath has no bounds. They, they, they're literally just people with God powers, and they're like, I feel like doing this today, because this guy looked at me funny, or something like that, or like, he didn't mm -hmm. he didn't kill this bull well enough. How dare he? <laughs> so he's going to have an ingrown toenail that'll eventually kill him, because it's, it's way back in the day. How dare he? Yeah, I know. Dude, they were the, it was the fall of Rome before, before Rome. It was the pre-Rome. Mm -hmm. They just fell. And that, that I'm glad you brought that up because that that is where the allegorical side of this debate really gets its stronghold because I, just analyzing the information we've given you this far, uh, you can kind of assume that it's a really good story. You yeah, know? for sure. Uh, there was you know an ancient utopian society that was slowly slipping through the cracks and it just out of nowhere it couldn't contain itself and boom it was destroyed wiped from the face of history and the earth and i mean that's a great way to describe the workings of society and kind of how it's very fragile yeah sometimes it just uh ends yeah there ain't nothing you can do about it it's just fucking, <laughs> then you just try again it's just done just you got try again sometimes. you got no chance Time to go into the sea. Now, I'm going to, well, I guess, okay, for, just in case you were asking this question to yourself, how does this work? So is it an island? Is it a continent? It's been described as both. It's a continent. Yeah. It's an island. Isn't Australia just an island? Kind of, yeah. yeah. It's just a big island. Continent island. Um, So, essentially... Atlantis was described and believed to be similar to Hawaii in that way, where it is one large island where the cities were. That's the big area. Yeah. And then it's surrounded by a bunch of outlying smaller islands that kind of kept it at bay. And that was one of the reasons they were so powerful, because they couldn't get invaded because of all the little islands and soil deposits that stopped people from pulling into the main island. So, I get okay. You know, now I'm really stuck on this Australia thing. <laughs> I don't think Australia is Atlantis. Just I, to clear the air. No, That's... me neither. <laughs> I I have a I have a larger question. This is very off topic, but I want us to take a minute and just understand something about the way life works. <laughs> what What exactly is an island? Okay, an island is just a landmass surrounded by water, right? Yeah. Isn't everything an island then? Because, I mean, yeah, okay, so we live in the United States. Yeah, but we're all connected and shaped weird. But we're just one big island. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I, we're surrounded by water. I mean, the planet's an island in space, you know? Exactly, it's... that's what I'm saying. So the idea of <laughs> How an island. How far can we stretch islands? <laughs> islands can be anything to me. I don't understand why it yeah, could be. It could be the counter in your fucking kitchen. Ooh, they call those islands. I know. They do. It's insane. But I, th th this has nothing to do with Atlantis, just more so with why aren't we called the United <laughs> Islands of America? Why can't we all just be islands and live island life? 
But you know how great that would do so much for the morale of <laughs> We'd the world. We'd all have like leg and all. It would be crazy. Like, can you imagine some guy? Just, I feel like India especially deserves it because they're like they, just, <laughs> they are just they deserve to be an island. They are just packed in there like fucking sardines. Well, at least the way they are now, they they have like means of uh, you know walking away. Yeah, I I want them to have I want them to have the air about them that's just like ah. Island life. <laughs> they need to relax. They deserve it. I mean, if any place in the world, yeah, them and China, no, right. China, they're very like busy. Yeah. They're landlocked, and it's just very hectic. It's like you need some island lifestyle. You need some guy on the street, like <laughs> in a bikini made of grass, just sipping out of a coconut, and then everything would be better. That needs to be normal in your life. I, I yeah. I say you should do that. That's oh, yeah. how that's right. how we spread the message of this show. Everybody wear grass bikinis and hula your way around town and just drink liquor out of coconuts at noon. Yeah. And sunglasses any time of the day. Don't listen to the boss. Whatever the boss says, don't do. Just keep drinking your yeah. coconut. Say you're on island time. Now this is the mentality the Atlanteans had, and this is what caused them <laughs> to crumble. This is their ultimate downfall. <laughs> this thing we're suggesting for the world. This is what caused them to crumble. They got far too comfortable in their island lifestyle. So, pretty much, we've given you the overall story of Atlantis. There's really not much more to it. I mean, as a whole, it was really only talked about by one author in yeah, and, in its entirety. And I mean, like. We kind of just did like a cursory thing of like the descriptions that Plato gave oh, yeah. of Atlantis. Like the texts are often referred to people who are looking for Atlantis and like actually actively trying to figure it out as Plato's checklist. There's like there's so many details that like if you have all these things, there's a huge chance you're about to find some sort of civilization. Pretty much. So this can bring us into the part that I'm most excited about. Where the hell is it? <laughs> Where the fuck did Atlantis Where go? Where is it? Where to go? Is it in the ocean? Is it is it in a desert? There's so many different options. Now, I want to say one quick thing. There is this is different, but it's it can connect back to the whole thesis of this ideal. Okay. Okay. So you guys might be familiar with the Mayas, correct? Yeah. The Mayans, they are Pretty cool. They got some good stuff. They going got on. some good architecture. They are what we would refer to as a lost civilization. Not only because we don't know what happened to them, but we don't really know how they got to where they were anyway. Yeah. We don't know much about them other than what was left behind and what we can surmise was from them. They got some pyramids with right angles. They got a calendar. Now, you might say to yourself, well, even in these instances, you know, when you lose a civilization, there's always some type of trace of that civilization, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Not always the case. The Minoan civilization, okay? Interestingly enough, they were a Bronze Age Aegean, Aegean civilization in Greece. They lived on the island of Crete, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, it is believed that they were wiped out by natural disaster. Um, there were... Potential volcanic activities along with other waves, uh, tsunamis, things like that. Yeah. That caused them to be overrun. And now when they were overrun, they, the people that came in, they didn't decimate everything they did. They took all of the existing structure and built over it. So, for about 10,000 years... We never knew this civilization existed. We attributed most of their work to another civilization. However, upon further inspection, we realized that, holy shit, someone came along and melted all of this fucking gold, took all of these buildings, and just built over them. And there, somebody else built all this. That's like, like the ultimate historical fuck you. It's just like, oh, I built the civilization. Another one's just like... I'm no, that, that's ours. We're going to erase all trace of you from history. Yeah. <laughs> like, until some people maybe figure it out. So the Minoan civilization was roughly from 3000 BC to about 1500 BC, somewhere in that area. And it we have the official date that it, we know that it would have ended around 1100 BC. That right. was the last remnants, okay? Okay. 
And it took forever to figure out that this civilization didn't exist. Like, it took a long time. <laughs> it took well over a thousand years for us to figure out that, hey, something's going on here. Arguably okay? too long. At least, like, 11 generations. <laughs> and, and to be fair... The historians and the arch, uh, not architects, the what's the word I'm looking uh, for? Archaeologists. archaeologists. Yes, the Indiana Joneses. Uh, <laughs> the Joneses. Yeah. They uh, they cannot be blamed because uh, who's to know? I mean, look at we just talked about the curse of the Pharaoh's tomb, right? It, it wasn't until the 1920s that we figured out who King Tut was. Yeah. And that he moved the capital somewhere, and then he moved it back, and then he's not even in either of those places. Right. So many things. Now, these, there's there's things in history that I'm sure we don't know today. Or maybe it's things that we've been taught or learned about that will change over time when we get more information on things. Yeah, well, the Smithsonian's kind of got a lockdown on the historical timeline. That's true. A lot of new stuff is getting up. Uh, brushed under the rug but that's a complete different episode the smithsonian yeah that is that's very different conversation they're very but against change there are as we can see there's examples of societies and i mean i want to say is it nine or twelve there's like the the list of ancient civilizations that were lost that we are kind of looking into the maya would be number one probably most recognizable yeah, yeah. um but they all share certain things, right? They have this crazy architecture. Uh, sometimes they have technology or weaponry that would be far beyond what we ever thought was capable for the time. And here they are having it. I mean, look at the pyramids. We still, still cannot figure out how they did that. We do not know. We just don't know. Um, Could it be that ancient alien architects had something to do? With yeah, you all never know. of these stories. No, dude, I need to rewatch that show. I see. I like Ancient Aliens, but then there's a part of me that gets really upset at that show. No, I mean, so, I, you can't watch more than like three episodes at a time, or else they start getting into like, do microscopic robot bugs have anything to do with the pyramids? It's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, like, and, <laughs> and I think. It's, I don't know. As much as I want to believe that perhaps aliens benefited humanity at one point in time, we're taking a lot of credit away from people, you yeah. know? <laughs> They're just like, no one could have built this. It's like, actually, uh, thousands of people died to build this, so it's kind of maybe you same. respect that. It gives me the same feeling I get. Now, this might make some people upset out there, but I'm, I'm going to say it anyway. It's like when... Someone you know is has like some type of medical issue or there's like a serious health concern and you know they're in the hospital and maybe they need emergency surgery, something something along those lines. There's some type of incident, okay? And then when that person is done and everyone around them is like, I'm so happy you're okay, you know, we prayed for you. God is good, God saved your life. You're taking away a lot of credit from the doctors that studied their ass off to get to that point. Yeah. And quite literally saved a human life with nothing but their brain and their hands and was like yeah we figured out the problem we think i mean you know kudos to you you know you have your faith yeah. believe what you want and i'm sure people would be like oh no we're thanking god for making the doctor be born or some shit yeah. like that but it's still it's just like okay can you just like thank this guy and his name or this woman by her name yeah and... like dr dr smith that's the person that saved your <laughs> dr. life dr smith thank you god you're pretty cool all right that's exactly how i feel about ancient aliens it's like i love it like i'm i'm a, i'm kind of a believer in that but then at the end of the day i'm also like i mean i feel bad like there were slaves that probably ended up building that thing <laughs> yeah for hundreds of years and like they're up somewhere if you believe in heaven maybe they're in heaven or they're like in the afterlife they're looking down they're like this guy doesn't believe I was capable of that. What an asshole. He's blaming something <laughs> he doesn't even know truly exists. If God is all good, then he's sheltering them from that knowledge. Yeah, I hope so. But <laughs> that was really off topic. <laughs> sorry. But, uh, sorry about that. But, um, I mean, just because these things exist, there's not necessarily a answer that is not of this world. Sometimes we just don't know how things got done. I yeah, mean, and sometimes they figure shit out we still can't figure out. It's 
Yeah, exactly. People are are tight sometimes. That's just kind of how it works. So we can now move into potential locations. Where is it? Okay. Now I have I have what I believe to be one of the one of the more easy answers that makes the most sense. But I'm going to save that one for the end because that one, it, come on, it's just the best. It's the it's my favorite. There you go. Now, Jake, where do you think this beast of an island, the civilization, where do you think it could be? What are your, what are your thoughts mulling around in that, that brain of yours? I don't know, Val. I've heard a lot of things about it possibly being on the coast of Spain, the, uh, the like southern coast of Spain right outside of the, uh, the Gibraltar area there. Yes, around uh, because, Spain and Turkey. They yeah, say around sometimes. the yeah around there because there there is like a, a city that was said to be there in the Bible too. I forgot the name of it. I'm blanking on the name, but uh, that city and Atlantis were both said to have like huge deposits of uh, like some materials that were very uh, adamantium. Adamantium. I, I think, <laughs> Maybe I it's that. that. That's just Wolverine's bones. But, no, apparently the stones, like uh, according to Plato, were like black, white, and red. Ooh. And a lot of people think it was like there was gold, silver, and copper, like mountain copper. That Ooh, would be red. That's kind of cool. I don't know. Like I heard stuff about that, but there's also this like blue eye in the middle of the Sahara that people say may have been the location of it because there was some sort of like inlet for, of the of the the ocean that went kind of just in. Ooh. It was like the a Florida, but like negative. You know, it was just water instead uh-huh. of land. Okay. I don't fucking know where it is. People are diving for it. There's there's civilizations they're finding. Like, is this Atlantis? And like, I don't know. Give me more information, Diver. So I, I have no fucking clue where it is. I handpicked three of my personal favorite ideals. Okay, okay. all right. I'm gonna start with the. Uh, I'm gonna start with the least likely one. It's the one that I want to be the most true. I think. Yeah. Only because it is. It's so cool. But some people have theorized. That the island of Atlantis was no island at all. That perhaps it was part of a larger land mass. Okay. All right. And they believe that it could be South America, on the tips of South America, possibly even Mexico. Was this like a, a recent it's, finding? It's a little bit more recent. Okay. The idea behind this, uh, the reason being, this connects back to the Mayas, perhaps. That is some of the lost remnants of Atlantis. It would not only be a double whammy because we would learn about two civilizations that we thought were gone and maybe not real at all. Just blend them together. And this, I I think this is, I don't know this for certain, but I'm going to assume that this has something to do with the the beliefs and teachings of Graham Hancock because he is a huge proponent of all of the ancient civilizations having some form of connection to each other. Yeah, the, the biggest thing I know from... It, it, was he the guy who talked about ley lines and how like they're all kind of mm-hmm. the same length and they're on the same ley lines around the world? Right, and they all line up. They they're, they're like they're all like numerology, like all the distance between them mm-hmm. all lines up and like says some weird shit. Yeah, the distance. Uh, you most can tell of, I don't know much about it, but <laughs> a lot of their structures are based on astro- uh, astrological alignments, and they share many similarities. Uh, obviously, the biggest one being the pyramids of Giza uh, lining up with Orion's belt. Yeah. Um, Could it be that ancient alien technology (laughs) had something to do with this? You never know. Who knows? Cell phones back then. But um, he is a huge proponent of that, and I kind of looked into it a little bit just so I could... It's it's hard. Let me just tell you this. It's hard. When When you cover a lot of different conspiracies and weird things, it's hard to keep all this information straight. Yeah. And a lot of times there's bleed over, and it's like, but that is not to have to do with it. I, you don't yeah. know what to do. You don't know what exactly. to do. It's all the same, but everything's so different. And Graham Hancock, I was watching this thing on YouTube about how he he truly believes uh, he's done ayahuasca multiple times, and he believes that this is some. This is kind of how they communicated, that 
there are drugs or substances out there similar to ayahuasca, if not ayahuasca itself. Yeah. That is kind of the link between all of humanity, both past, present, and future. So he thinks it was like a, a chemically induced astral projection sort of thing? But maybe. I maybe. Don't, it's, I didn't really get into the details of how he thinks it works, but there are other people that believe that too, that they're... These people take these drugs or these substances and kind of trip out, I guess you'd say. <laughs> and upon doing that, they sometimes see symbols or pieces of evidence that mean nothing to them. But when they look into it, they have like huge historical significance. Yeah, they like they're found in other places in the world. And I think there I think there could be some merit to something like that. Now, you might be asking yourself, how exactly is an island that was dealing with Greece on the other side of the planet, how did it get all the way over here to the Western civilization? And the answer that is given most of the time is continental drift. Now, I hate to tell you this. I'm no scientist, but it does. it takes a lot longer than 10,000 years to get from one end of the planet to the other. Oh, yeah, I think it might... Uh maybe move like five or six feet in that time. Yeah, I don't think it's going super far. Yeah. Um, I, I I don't believe this is true. I think, I think it's interesting. I think it has a really intense and poignant belief behind it. It's kind of fun. No, yeah, it's, it's nice to think. But it's, I don't know, it's a little... It's a little flimsy to me. There's no meat to it. <laughs> All you know? the ancient civilizations were getting stoned. It's fallen off the bone for me. I'm going to yeah. say no on this one. <laughs> That's so desirable. I'm going to say no. I'm also going to probably say no to the second one. Okay? Which is? No, this one gained a lot of traction in the 1900s. And this is that maybe it was Antarctica. Okay. What? Now. Where the Nazis went? Well, yeah, I guess. Maybe. I'm sorry. I'm know. opening up all these different cans of worms. That's in, okay. In the center of the earth, hollow earth theory. But. But, but, but. <laughs> Antarctica. <laughs> There's two schools of thoughts on the Antarctica train, okay? First is the one that was proposed in the 1950s, and that would be that a small chunk of land broke off of Antarctica... And it didn't necessarily move far, but it moved off of the tundric, ice-barren wasteland that's out there. And since it floated off just a little bit, it became a little bit more temperate and moderate. Um, this would kind of give some explanation as to why they were able to fuck with the Greeks. Uh, they'd be a lot closer than they would if they were in, I don't know, say, Mexico. That's true, yeah. Um... But then you have to kind of ask yourself, does that make any sense? The answer is probably no. Probably not. So, yeah, I'm, like to make it make sense in my mind, to like visualize it, I'm just picturing a huge chunk of ice. Yeah, kind of. You know, it's just floating and then cooling off the, the tropic. Now, the one thing that can make this theory slightly more... Intense, I guess you'd say. I don't know. Or like um, tenable? For like, like, yeah, that's more a better believable? word. So, yeah. This, this is about 12,000 years ago. Okay, so I don't, know if you guys, I don't know if you guys know this, but there were some ice ages in there, okay? And they possibly believe that perhaps because of ice caps melting, maybe some land or some islands that were out in that direction in the Mediterranean or possibly below the Mediterranean were absorbed by the melting ice caps. Yeah, it's like what's happening with uh, Venice right now. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um, now, this would not explain the sudden disappearance that Plato talks about, but it would be maybe give some answers to a disappearing island, you know. Definitely, and there are civilizations that are submerged now yeah like yeah. whether or not their atlantis is yet to be seen but we we have discovered like entire towns under the water oh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna put the kibosh on alaska okay <laughs> might not be alaska i don't know 
Or not Ala- Antarctica. Not Alaska. <laughs> sorry. Shit. Beautiful state. Beautiful state. Oh, man. Sarah Palin. But let I me... I can see fucking Russia from my back door. God, she was uh, funny. She... <laughs> oh. I was thinking about Sarah Palin the other day. I don't know why. Oh, man. Oh, the, oh no. Is she still alive? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. I can't believe that. I'm not surprised was... she hasn't killed herself yet. I don't know, man. I, I just thought of her because there's a band called Michael Sarah Palin. I like that. It's good. Okay. Now, here's the one that I I like the most. So I'm not going to say that I think it's true. I just happen to like it's it the, a lot. It's the best ride. Off the coast of Puerto Rico may lie the old what? island of Atlantis. Okay. Now, you might be asking yourself, oh, that, that area on the map seems slightly familiar to me. Is there uh, another thing? There's the Bermuda Triangle. Oh. Ooh. Puerto Rican if Atlantis. You, if you haven't listened to it yet, we have an episode on the Bermuda Triangle. We do. And please check it out. I think you're going to love it. It's a good time. It's triangular. But let me explain something to you. This it would be a bit of a, a bit of a ways to travel, obviously, if they were going to go to Greece. However, it's not completely impossible. Uh, there's many island nations that were down there in the Caribbean, and recent studies have shown. Well, actually, I don't even know if they're really called studies. They went on a diving expedition in the Bermuda Triangle to just kind of see what the hell yeah, is going people on. People saw some shit, and we're going to talk about it. They, you know, they went out there and they were kind of like, what the hell is going on out here? And they encountered something that they kind of just can't really explain. And that would be these weird fucking rock formations under the water. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I mean really weird rock formations. Bimini Road, as it's called. They are giant rock formations underneath the Bahamian waters. And they are put in a perfect square, 90 degree angles, like literally perfect 90 degree angles, not 91, not 89, like That's perfect. That's fucking crazy. Perfect angles, perfect placement. And they don't know what the hell it is. They don't know what it is. Now, they have said that this is a perfectly natural formation of rock. This is how things happen. I, like, don't get that. I don't understand it either. Just okay. mathematically perfect right angles multiple times? Yeah. Just in one area of the bottom of the fucking ocean? Now, it, it's interesting because they are buried uh, in in mud, essentially, in, in you know, mud. dirt and mud, grime, yeah. whatever's down there. Very the similar, water land. very similar to the uh, the way Plato described how the city was swallowed. Yeah, and they're let's just say this: they're big rocks. So if they are man-made, if these things are put in place, it's not easy. Okay, it's kind of like Stonehenge. It's like what the fuck? Like, like what how is did this? they do that? So we are looking at Bimini Road, and we are wondering to ourselves, what could this be? Is that Maybe this was, you know, a man-made structure from the city of Atlantis. Mm, maybe. That's my favorite. Maybe some people theories. have been strolling down in the ocean. Now, we, you know, I want you guys to sit sit on it and stew on it and marinate in all these word juices. Absorb that we've all given the flavors. You. And I do. I want to end this with one one thing, only to. Play the devil's advocate, okay? Yeah. Could it be an allegory? We know we know the way the writings of Plato work. We know the teachings and the philosophical ideals he held. It really is kind of the perfect description of what some people say America is dealing with now. That greed and corruption and fighting for resources that we don't particularly need to sustain ourselves will be the downfall of a once supposed great nation. Yeah. It's yeah. it's literally the exact definition of Atlantis. It's it's a perfect societal archetype. And, and yeah. I I don't know I don't know who knows because like I said earlier, keep it in mind, no one thought Troy was real either. Yeah. Yeah. And they just 
found it one day. They just found it, and it was all just it was all exactly how they described it. Mm-hmm. It's fucking crazy. And it I don't know. There's there's no definitive answer for this. It really comes down to what you believe, what you read, and just kind of where you where you decide to put yeah. your brain. You Honestly, know? the world can surprise you sometimes. You, I mean, I know you know about that shrimp that can like break a sound barrier with a fucking uh, its big knuckles. Yeah, what is uh, the mantis shrimp? The Wait, mantis shrimp. The, I think it is the mantis shrimp. I think shrimp. it is. It can, like, I don't know what it does. There's. I remember there's one shrimp, and it's got, it's got like, a claw, and it looks like a fist. It's like and Mr. It, Crab's claw. And, yeah, yeah it, it's the one we're talking about, and it when it snaps, it it's so hard and so fast that it literally creates a vacuum in the ocean. Now it's a tiny, it's like a little bubble, but it's just a, it's just a. <laughs> Who'd have thought that existed though? This is what I'm trying to get at. It's you know? <laughs> great, like it literally sucks like everything out of the water, and just turns yeah. it into a, a bubble of oxygen underwater. There's that shrimp. There's like fucking six hundred year old Greenland sharks. Yeah, those. Things there's are a cool. bunch of shit in the ocean that we didn't know was there until mm-hmm. recently, dude. I'm saying, I I think Atlantis could totally exist. I'm like 70-30 on it existing. I think that's a fair way to put it, because I I I feel that way, too. It's like... If anything, it's just nice. It's nice to think. It's nice to believe. I'm no no philosopher, okay? Now, I mean, I'm semi-familiar with the idea of philosophy, but I'm not particularly involved in it. But what I do know is that it's a little questionable that this has so much detail. Uh, it, it, just put yourself in this situation. If you're trying to describe something, why would you create an entire fictional island with a society and life and structure and political scope and all of this just for it to be like a comparison? You know, you could just make something up and... Oh, yeah. well, you know, they I dance mean, on it, rainbows in this world. Yeah, if it's like a story meant for entertainment, then like, sure. Like, that just makes right. it that much more of a real thing in your mind because you know it's fake. But like, yeah, the fact that it was in the framing of an allegory is, is kind of cool Yeah, it's, when it comes to it. It's a very unique... It changes the whole dynamic. Because usually, like, when, when people lie, like, a really good indication that someone's lying, like, oh, what'd you do today when they did some shit they shouldn't have done? They were just like... Oh, it was great. At 7.45, I did this. Uh, that led me right into 8.30 where I did this. And it's just like, it's all planned out. They planned it out, you know. Like, are you sure you did this? But this whole, like, allegory framing kind of flips that on its head and makes it uh, have the opposite effect. Yeah. It's kind of cool. So, I don't know. It's up to you guys out there listening. You guys or girls or whoever. You guys, If aliens are listening, I would gladly accept Hello, that. aliens. We love you guys. But... It is up to you to decide if Atlantis is real or not, because you know what? No one knows. No one does know, including me, Jake, yeah. or Grant there. We just wanted to share some interesting details about a potential lost civilization. Yeah, it's beautiful. So with all that being said. Uh, I think it's probably the end. One thing I do want to address, we did not do the Patreon episode this week. No, we And that didn't. is 100% my fault. Uh, I had some uh, shit going on this week. Ultimately took all my attention. But we will get back to you on that, and we will maybe make two? You want to just do two weeks in a row, or uh, what do you yeah, want to do here? I don't care. We have to make it up to them. Yeah, we'll figure it out. You guys will get the content you so delicately crave. We'll yeah, so, yeah, I'm sorry about that. It you know we forgive you Jake it's fine these things happen oh thanks but all of that being said that is effectively our episode is for the, end the, of the week episode for the week here at what time is it like three thirty in the it afternoon three forty seven it's exactly oh. fifty nine minutes from the last time oh. I said something we have so much potential for tonight we do we, we could do oh. anything it's not even four o'clock oh yet. my god. Oh yeah, and it's gonna be Easter too. So if you're, you know, into e- if you're into that, <laughs> yeah, fucking risen zombies, cool. If you're into that, have a good old time eating ham. Yeah, why ham, ham is like and the some Easter cheesy food. potatoes. Yeah, that's what I'm having. 
That's yeah, that's exactly what I'm having too. So we'll, <laughs> hell yeah, we'll, uh, all right. We'll let you guys know how the ham was next week. Cause yeah. I know Matt's out there driving or doing something, just oozing about what kind of ham we're gonna <laughs> eat. <laughs> I see you out Honey there. Honey baked. Mm. But yeah, we will be back next week with another episode. We will. It's true. And uh, this was we are starting a cult. That's Grantham Jake. And you should follow us on all the shit. I mentioned that we may uh, delete the Twitter. I think we're just going to leave it dormant. Yeah. I think like we should just leave it dormant because just know that we don't really post much on there. But if people start following, if there's an influx of followers, we'll start doing some shit on there. Yeah. But for exactly. right now, do the Twitter. But mostly Instagram, Facebook. Uh, we are on YouTube. We got a Patreon. There's a link below. All these things. Uh, it's great. Tell everyone about it. The podcast, I mean, we are starting a cult. Join us, Gomex. Bye-bye. We love you. Bananas.